to this service of reflection for Palm Sunday. We hope that however you are feeling and wherever you are on your journey to the cross, you feel known and loved by the God who so loved the world. Palm Sunday is one of the enigmas in the Christian calendar. It speaks of joy and celebration and of worshipping Jesus, the King of Kings. And yet, of course, it lead, leads us into the events of Holy Week, the memory of sorrow and suffering. We cannot think of one without the other. Yet, this is the challenge this day brings. Through the hosannas and the waving palms, 
the singing and the joy. Come and walk the road with Jesus. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We will walk with him. Through the betrayal and denial, the shouting and the sorrow, come and walk the road with Christ. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We will walk with him. Through the waving pan, palms and the passion, the prayers and the pain, come and walk the road with him. We will walk the road with him. We will not leave him now. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Palm Sunday in Jerusalem. The shouting gets louder. The noise swells to a roar. Hosanna is the cry of the crowd. Blessings on him who come in the name of the Lord. You were there that day, one of that great throng of people, tightly packed together in the streets, waiting for Jesus to come. Can you hear them cheering? Look at all the colour. Inside you feel excited and expectant, just like the rest of them. Here he comes now, Jesus the Messiah. Jesus, the people's redeemer. Jesus, the saviour of the world. You join in the cheering as well, caught up in the excitement of the moment. You also shout Hosanna. As Jesus passes riding on the back of a donkey, he is smiling. For one brief moment, among all the people in that crowd, he catches your eye. No words are exchanged, but his look says everything. Because clearly, he understands how you feel. And under your breath, there are a few words you keep on repeating over and over again. You whisper them silently. Over and over again, some words that you want him to know. So in this moment of quiet, we lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are. Trusting you to forgive and heal what is broken to welcome our praises and to receive them as your own. And say them to him now, as your eyes meet his. Say them to them now, as his eyes meet yours. Jesus has not heard your words. How could he? The noise is too great. The people are too many. The moment of meeting too short. But he has understood you all right. For the smile on his face breaks even wider. And the depth of his love for you shines from his eyes. And then he looks away. The donkey carries on. Others like you will sing their praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, 
The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in highest heaven! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Meditation of one of the owners of the colt, ridden by Jesus. Hello, I thought, what's going on here? And you can hardly blame me. For there I was, minding my own business, when suddenly these fellows I'd never clapped eyes on appeared from nowhere, and as cool as you like, started to make off with our donkey. In broad daylight, too. That's what I can go over, bold as brass, without so much as a by your leave. Well, you can imagine my surprise, can you? Hardly the kind of goings on you would expect in a quiet village like ours. So I asked him straight, What's your game? And that's when they spoke those special words. The Lord needs it. Not the fullest of explanations, admittedly. But that was all I needed. For straight away, it all came flooding back. That day when Jesus came by, and for a wonderful few moments, I met him face to face. No, you won't have heard about it. For it wasn't the sort of encounter to hit the headlines. No stunning healing or unforgettable miracle needed in my case. But he touched my life as surely and wonderfully as any. Offering a new direction 
a fresh start, from which I have never looked back. Quite simply, he changed my life. And though I'm not the sort to shout it from the rooftops, I wanted to respond nonetheless, to show Jesus how much he meant to me, how much I valued what he'd done. This was it. The chance I'd been waiting for. My opportunity to give something back at last. Hardly earth-shattering stuff, I grant you. The loan of a donkey. But that didn't matter. The fact was that Jesus was in need of me. It was all I needed to know. He arrived soon after, and I followed him to Jerusalem, where the crowds were waiting to greet him, wild with excitement, shouting their praises, throwing down their cloaks in welcome. And small though it had been, I knew I had done my bit to make that great day possible. Never forget that, whoever you are, however little you think you have to offer, for some day, some time, your moment will come. A day when your contribution to this kingdom will be requested in those lovely words. The Lord needs it. Meditation of Simon the Zealot You should have heard them. What a noise. What a sight. What a welcome. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like it in all my born days. And there's been a few of those. We've had kings here. Governors would be messiahs. And they've all had their moments. Their fans are enforced to greet them. But nothing like this, nowhere near it. They came in their thousands, waiting to meet him. The news of his coming having raced before him. And it wasn't just his followers, it was everyone. Men, women and children, 
plucking branches from the trees, tearing off their cloaks, carpeting the road before him. Their voices hoarse with shouting. Hosanna, they cried. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It was treason, of course, and probably heresy too. But nobody cared. Devil the consequences. This was a time for rejoicing, and rejoice we did. Yet, if that was unusual, the abandonment, the jubilation, there were stranger things to follow. For just a few days later, less than a week in fact, the scene was so very different. The same people, by and large, once more part of a crowd. But this time, not love, but hatred in their faces. Not welcome, but rejection. Their waving hands, suddenly shaking fists. Their Hosanna to the son of David, all at once. We have no king but Caesar. I wouldn't have believed it possible if I hadn't seen it for myself. But the sad fact is, I not only saw it, in my own way, I was part of the whole sorry business. For when the crisis came, I was found wanting, concerned only to save my skin, with no thought as to his. It was a chilling lesson, and one that I, like so many others, learned the hard way. The lesson that it's easy to call someone a king. Much harder to actually serve them. Over the last month, we have journeyed with Amanda as she has spoken to us about the theme of love. Challenged us, affirmed us, made us question what we feel and think about love. To love the Lord God with all our hearts and all our minds. And as today is the culmination of that month of talking about love, what better day than Palm Sunday and the start of what is the culmination of the very essence of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That love that was so passionate and so radical that it sacrificed itself for us, for you and for me and for everyone else. Wherever love is, there is God. So what kind of love is God's love? It is love that forgives and then forgives and then forgives again. It is love that rolls up its sleeves and gets involved in the caring and mending and building. It is love that is quite happy to be considered the fool, to be considered weak. It is love that goes on giving, but holds no account. Love is not selective, and it is totally unconditional. What is the nature of God's love? Well, as Amanda has told us these past couple of weeks, it is a doing word. God's love is doing. This is the nature of God's love. To sacrifice. For God so loved the world. This is the nature of God's love. For this is the very nature of our God. Majesty, worship his majesty.
let us pray. Loving God, you know and understand each and every one of us. And as we begin our walk through Holy Week, may we listen again to our own hearts and notice which parts of the story speak to us this year and at this time. You know what we need to hear this Holy Week, whether we need to be challenged or reassured. We give you thanks for all this last week has brought and all this coming will bring. For the hard and holy days ahead. In the week where we have marked a year of lockdown and honoured the losses we have experienced collectively and individually, we give you thanks for those in our church who are tasked with making decisions as we emerge from lockdown. But also keep in mind the great work that has been done in the past year to bring church to a wider and often new audience. May those small shoots of mission grow beyond lockdown. We give you thanks for all who have worked tirelessly throughout the past year. And as we see the rates of COVID infection decreasing, we give you thanks. But we are mindful of the increase in burnout and exhaustion felt by so many. May they feel your loving arms embrace them. We give you thanks for those in positions of power, those whose decisions affect the very lives of so many. May we all seek to promote justice, compassion and a fairer society for all. We keep in our thoughts teachers and educators who are constantly having to adapt while trying to support the growing need of mental health support for their students. We pray for individuals we know who are suffering, bereaved or in distress. And in the silence now, we offer up to you those we know who are on our minds and in our hearts. May the story of Holy Week sustain us and bring us comfort, companionship and hope. And now we draw our voices together as we say the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this service of reflection. Please feel free to comment on Facebook or YouTube, even if it's just to say hi. It's lovely to engage with you, even if it still has to be online. Thank you to Shona for the reading and to Barry, who has put all my clips together into the polished service that you are watching now. There is still a tea and talk on a Thursday afternoon and it will be on this coming Thursday. I have, however, had to change the room code so please do get in touch for the new link if you want to join us for a very informal time of chat and just clash, really. So go into Holy Week, following in the footsteps of Christ. May facing hard things allow transformation. 
and for the Easter light to be born anew. The blessing of God of light, creator, guide and inspirer, rest and remain with you, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>